So there's only four points of contact that you have with your AR-15, and of the four, your stock is the most important. It's the, the way your cheek rest fits your face, the length from your shoulder to your trigger, down to the way you plan on securing your sling. Uh, it's pretty important to personalize this thing to fit you, not your buddy, not your kid, not your girlfriend, but you, uh, which is why today we're talking all things AR-15 stocks. Hey guys, Randy here from AT3Tactical.com, episode number 10, it's stocks, it's butt stocks, it's rifle stocks, pistol braces, uh, adjustable, collapsible, fixed, all the options in between. When you get down to it, it's about stability, recoil management, sling mounting point options, and uh, storage, of course. But basically, those are the four reasons that we have butt stocks in the first place. Although stability being the most important, it goes well beyond just shoving this thing into your shoulder or resting it on a sandbag and squeezing the trigger. If you want comfortable, consistent, repeatable accuracy every time you look through your sights, then make sure that this thing is fitted to you. So with that, let's take a look at what types, features, and things are out there for the AR-15 stocks in the world and actually why you might use either one of these. All right, start with fixed. Fixed is where it all started for the AR-15, of course. Uh, and actually, they're still serving their purpose over 80 years later. Fixed stocks are just, they're just a no muss, no fuss situation that leaving a, a lot of the guesswork out of the choices for your back end. But also, it definitely is one of the most rigid and stable supports that you can get. Some of the coolest looking fixed stocks that you'll see are mainly geared towards precision shooters. Not only for that rigidity and stability of a fixed stock, but there's some really cool comfort and adjustments and tweaks that you can make either to the length of pull or the cheek rest height or comb, kind of like this Magpul PRS or this uh, Fab Defense Wraps uh, precision stock. But that said, if precision shooting's not your plan, then these fixed stocks are pretty much just a one size fits all choice. Meaning, if your perfect length of pole isn't around that 13 inch mark, or you have to strain to find your proper line of sight, there's really not much you can do about it after the fact. On the flip side though, uh, many body types, mine, yours, what have you, can fit the standard fixed stock and in a world of complete poly lowers, some of the most popular like this KE Arms KP15, utilize the entire monolithic lower end stock to give it the uh, rigidity that poly needs to be extremely durable and reliable. But that's why we have collapsible stocks. There's hundreds of a collapsible, adjustable style stocks out there so we can find the perfect fit and fitment to our personal body type. Obviously, it's pretty easy to change the length of pull instantly to match a shooting condition, so that's a plus, but ARs have also gotten increasingly shorter since the OG A2. So uh, we have now a more compact, a more concealable, a more transportable package as soon as you close this down. So we're gonna spend the bulk of the rest of today's video talking more about collapsible butt stocks, styles, mixes and matches of features that you can find, but there is one more black sheep, if you will, in the AR-15 butt stock uh, conversation that we have to talk about, and that is the good old pistol brace. Right now, it stands today, legislational lines, they've been drawn. Uh, supposedly, there's a definition of an AR pistol to be determined. The problem is it's still pretty damn murky, uh, especially on the topic of stocks and braces. So uh, this is an ever-evolving regulation. It can change at any second. So if you think you fall into this category or you do fall into this category, do yourself a favor and your family a favor. Keep up to date because you do not want to be on the wrong end of the law if and when they change it. Pistol brace styles and types, there's straight buffer tube. Sometimes there's a pad on there or not. There's hard plastic fins or blade styles. Uh, more commonly, something like this SBA-4 from SB Tactical, like I have on my 10 and a half inch pistol. I'd say this style's probably more favored, typically because it has wider cheek rests and, uh, or comb and six, five or six positions of adjustment. Thicker rubber in case you accidentally shoulder your pistol brace in the heat of engagement. Let's talk about AR-15 stock features next because the features, the bells and whistles are really the things that are going to decide which one of these that you choose to upgrade to or add to your AR build. 
First up, you have to know whether or not you have a mil spec or a commercial buffer tube because they have different diameters. We covered this uh, pretty well in depth in the last episode, buffer assembly conversation, but quick refresher. When you see mil spec or commercial listed on your stock, it's referring to one thing. It's the diameter of your buffer tube because they're different. Mil spec is smaller diameter. Commercial is wider diameter, meaning that commercial stocks being wider can fit on both buffer tubes, while mil spec diameter can only fit on mil spec. There's one thing to keep in mind. If you do put a commercial stock on a smaller mil spec buffer tube, uh, it actually might leave you with a little wiggle room or rattle, so not too much, but it can be noticeable to some. Next is length of pull adjustment. This is the core of collapsible stocks. It's the ability to adjust your length of pull, longer or shorter. Six positions is pretty standard for most com uh, collapsible stocks. It gives you anywhere from two to four inches of adjustability to your LOP, but the real thing to pay attention here is the release mechanism. Is it in a spot that you can catch it easily? Is it ergonomic enough to manipulate without thought? Uh, is it able to lock in place? Because for some of you, the ability to lock this thing in place and know that your length of pull stays the same every single time you pick it up gives you that reliability of the same consistent sight picture every time you point it downrange. On the note of sight picture, you have your cheek rest or comb. And in that line of thought, every time you pick up your rifle, it should feel like getting into your favorite car. You know exactly where everything is. It's like second nature because it's that level of familiarity and comfort that will get you the same repeatable sight picture every time, which directly translates into consistent and repeatable accuracy. People's faces, they're all different. There's wide, narrow eyes, thick cheeks, or cheekbones, beards, no beards. For me, I don't have much meat in my cheek, so resting my cheekbone on top of this thinner profile stock like the Magpul Mo just digs into my cheekbone, uh, whereas the wider gradual slope like the Magpul ACS, it spreads out that pressure point across my entire cheek and I can sit there for days holding my cheek to my buttstock. Another thing we have to account for and factor in is how we're going to attach the sling to the rifle because if you're not going to use your QD end plate, the only other option is your stock. Uh, in which case, there's quick disconnect points on some or most and there's fixed sling mounting points and there's a trade-off between the two. Attaching your sling straight to your stock is almost a fail-safe for this thing not going anywhere. You might even be able to hang from it with the support that you could get. However, the QD attachment, I'm a little less confident about because you can get in a hurry and not fully lock it into place or one of the ball bearings on there might fail at one point in time. This choice is definitely a personal purchase, but if you're leaning towards putting a strap straight to your stock, uh, I would watch for the width of those fixed sling slots because not all of them can fit the widest straps beyond an inch and a half. Towards the bottom of the list of important features is storage space because manufacturers have found all sorts of places for us to hide more crap. Nonetheless, they are useful, especially if you've ever had an optics die or a flashlight die in the middle of your range session. Maybe you needed a quick tool or a essential tool for your optics and you can store them right here in your stock. Uh, back in the day, in the earliest army days, we stored cleaning kits, tools, the occasional licky and chewy in the back end of an A2 stock. But now we have stocks like the Magpul ACS. It's got battery storage compartments for standard AA batteries or your CR123s. Little side compartment here for other batteries, optics, tools, and what have you. So I guess the question is, do you actually need all that storage room? Maybe it depends on how much you want to carry, but uh, I bet you won't need much more than an extra optics battery, maybe a lens cloth, maybe a couple small tools, most of which can actually fit in your pistol grip. So keep this in mind. The more crap that you put in those storage spaces, the more weight that you add to the back end of your rifle. That brings us to the butt end of your stock. It's the recoil pad, the butt stock pad. More often than not, your standard 556, 223 doesn't kick very much. Uh, so the pad isn't necessarily there to reduce the max amount of fill recoil. Um, but you do get the rubberized portion, which is there for mainly for the friction on your shoulder to keep that stock steady securely in your shoulder. And of course, every time we talk about an interchangeable AR-15 part, you got to talk about how sexy it is. So yes, it's best practice to pick your parts and accessories with mission purpose in mind. But once you've done that, 
consider how sexy it looks because honestly, uh, black A2 flat black isn't the only buttstock out there for fixed and the Magpul ACS isn't the only battery storage option with a wide comb for your cheek. So the point is to have the most comfortable, the most steady, the most reliable, the most repeatable squeeze of your trigger no matter what condition you find yourself in with this thing because the more familiarity that you have with your setup, the more accurate and effective you're going to be and actually the more capable you'll be of identifying other parts on your AR that could use some fine tuning. Like your trigger for example. How else are you going to figure out whether your uh, ideal trigger pull weight is five or three pounds or whether you prefer a single stage over a two stage? I'll tell you one way you could check out the next episode in the series right over here. It's all things AR-15 triggers. We'll see you over there.